uh, a wee bit stronger, a wee bit faster, okay? Now, it's five minutes off from max time. And, okay, so where was I? At 20, I think they, what's the record? 20106. I was at the bottom. Here we go. What is the final step of the Pikes Peak Marathon training block? Rest. Celebrate. 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 Breakfast and take the boys to school for their first day of school. Oh, boys. Starting second and third. I mean, way to go out with a bang this way, summer. We Champions. Are just, boom. Woo. So, you know our tradition. If you watch every training block, you know we always celebrate with breakfast. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Hello. Got to say, we're big, we're bad, we're victory battle. We're back your team, we're doing it. Wrestling and yeah. you know, not chit chatting yet, but DGR, DGR, we love you, we love you, and yes, I will get you the breakdown for the entire race here in like, well, here in a couple, here, here in a couple bloody marys. <laughs> Gotta get a couple bloody marys down. That's all we're saying. We love you guys. Thanks for coming out so strong. Oh, we were just talking about all the Butter My Bread merch out on the race course, and oh, it's just amazing. You guys are rocking it. <laughs> she left the coffee. She. She basically filled up her cup size four times. It's like, she's like, you know what? I'm just gonna leave it here. I'm just gonna leave this. In our defense, they're pretty tiny. Yeah. <laughs> Stick a fork in me, I am done. All right, let's go break down to Pikes Peak Marathon 2021. Um, we did it, hon. We did it. We did it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard. Once you have located your seat, we ask you that you please step out of the aisle. The passengers behind you can pass you. This will expedite our boarding process. Your large carry-on items need to go in the overhead compartments. Your smaller ones underneath the seat in front of you. Hey, 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 hey. Oh my! What a uh, past 48 hours, or is it 72 hours, everyone? Cheers from Chamonix, France. Here we are. Whoo! Pikes Peak Marathon. 2021, breaking it down for all of you from France, from UTMB. I'm out here filming and got a little, got a little pick me up, if you know what I mean. It has just been a, it's been an epic two or three days. Thanks for coming along the journey. Thanks for watching the race vlog. Hold on. In case you missed it, it is linked below or upper right hand corner. I've got some thoughts written down. I'm going to dive in and I want to try and um, take my insights from the 2021 Pikes Peak Marathon and apply them to your future races, okay? Which connects to the question of the day. Oh man, here we go. Uh, I'm just gonna start from the beginning. Morning, wake up in Manitou Springs. I was not nervous. In fact, I was very confident. And Bridget asked me, True Love asked me after the race why I was so confident. One of the, well, some reasons, here we go. I packed well. I trained well, I tapered well. Although, you know, if you were watching the vlog very closely leading into the into the marathon 2021, I was not I was not nervous going into the race, but about about 7 days out, I was like, wow, my legs are still very tired. Remember? I was beat up in Wyoming by Tyler. Shout out to Tyler again. Great runner, and the legs just didn't have that pop. That's what I said in Wyoming. I didn't have the pop. 
but I believe I said after that Wyoming race, the tune-up race, the Rendezvous Mountain Hill Climb, a seven-mile race, I said, I believe I said, trust the taper. And I said, I know the legs are kind of gonna come around. They're not here yet, but they're gonna come around. And sure enough, they did. So that is why I felt very, oh yeah. Also, I nailed the sleep. Didn't drink too much coffee the morning of the race, huh? Poured it out. But I nailed the sleeping pattern leading into this year's Pikes Peak Marathon. So that's one of, those are a couple of reasons why I was not nervous go, going to the uh, starting line. Now I could have been, you know, the combination of moving the family, high training, all summer long, you know, selling our house, buying a new house. That's a, a re and this is where it can be applied to you. If you are training for UTMB, uh, the Super Bowl, I'm pointing this way because the mountains are out here, the Super Bowl of ultra running, I would probably recommend not coming, not moving and selling your house before a big, big, lifelong bucket list race like UTMB, which is why I am here in France to film the race for all of you. I'm not racing, don't you worry. Um, so that's a little juxtaposition of taking my, and here's the thing, yeah, Pikes Peak, it's a big race, but it's not, um, I would never be moving before, let's say like a Western States or a Hard Rock or something like that. Just wanted to mention that really quick. Um, also, you show up at the starting line, you can't control the weather, you can't control the competition, okay? I had no clue who would be there. Um, I didn't look at the start list ahead of time, and sure enough, the gun goes off, okay? And boom, there goes a Solomon athlete, no clue, I, I don't know who he is, uh, but he took off, and guess what? I wasn't nervous. I wasn't nervous at all. Why? The training, frankly, the vest, all right? Show you the, showed you the vest before the race, and it just gave me a lot of confidence that I had the power, the strength, to go with anybody, okay? And so I let him go for maybe a half mile or so, and then here I am at about a little past a mile right at the uh, pump station, right before we hit the dirt, and boom, we're rocking and rolling, moving up the mountain, okay? So, kind of crazy, and I actually did not make this decision ahead of time, so I can't, like, claim it as a, um, I just, basically, as soon as I started going up the mountain, I was like, okay, these legs, these legs, my legs, they feel good, and I feel faster now, I feel faster than 2020, okay? So I ran this race last year, Pikes Peak Marathon, but I chose basically at the pump station not to look at my watch, essentially for as long as possible. Now, I did about halfway up about bar camp decide, okay, I'm gonna look at my watch at Treeline. But up until then, it was all by feel, baby. You guys know, I don't train by heart rate, I don't train by power, I don't train, if anything, I train by pace. If I had to pick one, and but for this, I was just it was just me in the mountain. Nobody, okay, no one was around me at all. I had no, you know, I think at bar camp about halfway up, I heard some some um, bells, some uh, cowbells, probably like five or six minutes back um, is roughly. So it's just me in the mountain. Actually, me and the deer. I ran with some deer along the way, and I looked at my watch at tree line, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just tell you. Yeah, of course. So the goal for the race, definitely a goal was to PR the ascent, okay? So last year I ran about 209, I think 30, right about two, maybe 209, 29 roughly uh, to the top from Manitou Springs. And so I wanted to PR the ascent this year in 2021. And, but I looked at my watch and I said, okay, we are looking pretty darn good here. I think we're gonna PR. Obviously, I'll talk about Matt Carpenter in a minute. Um, but at tree line, when I looked at the watch, I said, okay, now let's really rock and roll. And I felt, I felt, oh. there were moments above tree line where I just was cruising. I mean, cruising the breathing. Yes, I was breathing. You know what? It was interesting. I was almost a little bit of lactic acid in the legs, which usually doesn't happen above tree line for me. Usually it's the breathing where I'm like, oh. It's like I'm, I'm breathing. It's like I know it's all connected, but man, I was feeling really, really good above tree line. So that's a good sign. Um, so get to the top, 206.44. Okay, according to the uh, Pikes Peak Marathon website. So I cut about two minutes and 45 seconds 
from last year on the ascent so what can i say i mean that's just good that's good you know it's good strength it's good a year older um uh, a wee bit stronger a wee bit faster okay now it's five minutes off from max time and okay so where was i at 20 i think they what's the record 20106 i was at the bottom of the 16 golden stairs okay so for those of you that know the course well i was right at the bottom i, I was probably like 20 meters from the start of those tight switchbacks okay that's five minutes to the top Whew, Matt, it's it's the real deal. Like I just, it's the real deal. So 206.44 to the top. Now I'm a little shocked. <laughs> yeah, round trip. I'm gonna wrap this up because I know I'm going long here. Round trip. So I actually ran, I think, two seconds slower, roughly, than last year for the marathon time. Now I actually am proud of that because on the way down the finishing chute. Uh, here's the footage. I actually, I was looking, looking, looking for, of course, the family. So this is, I'm pointing at the boys. And if I would have, you know, just sprinted through the finish line, I probably would have beat last year's time by one or two seconds. But I turned, because that's the most important thing. I made eye contact with Joseph. He was so excited, my oldest son, all the boys. Uh, but especially Joseph and Seth, the older boys. And that's like, that is way more important connecting with your family over getting a PR. Um, so I have no regrets about slowing down a little bit to point at them. And But it means I ran actually, I looked it up this morning, I ran about two minutes slower than last year on the descent, which surprised me a little bit. Um, you know, because last year I had some stomach issues. This year I did take a bigger tumble. I will, you know, I have pretty fairly bloody at the bottom, um, but it didn't really slow me down that much. It maybe added 15, 20 seconds. Like I fell, you know, a, it wasn't a horrible, horrible fall. It, you know, flesh wounds. It wasn't like a, a bad knee, like hitting my knee or anything uh, like that. So it's amazing, everybody, um, in the sense that, you know, you just keep turning that doorknob, you get another year older, you don't forget, you don't, um, you don't be afraid to dream, dream big, work hard. And I'm very pleased with 206.44. Very pleased, everyone. I am actually a little curious <laughs> where that stacks up on all time ascent times. You know, I don't know if, you know, if, if anybody has that information, like, does that put me top 10? I don't know, I'd be curious. You know, this is a lifelong race. I grew up watching this race watching my dad, watching Matt Carpenter run this race. It's like part of who I am. So it, to, to be in the top 10, I would think that time would get me close, 206.44. If anybody has information on that, definitely let me know down in the comments. And Matt, I mean, again, was it 94, 93, 92? I mean, just think of the marathon world record, how often that record is broken. 20106, I think is what it is. For it to stand that long, it's just so impressive. So Matt, tip of the cap to you, sir. I mean, whoo, great job, Matt. It's just unbelievable. All right, comment of the day, question of the day. Here we go. Uh, shout out to Frank. He says, not a very emotional guy, uh, but I did tear up a little watching today's vlog. Been going through some, uh, some stuff lately and have completely ignored running was even considering blowing off the entire fall racing season. Seeing today's vlog reminded me why I love running. Thanks, dude, and God bless Frank. Frank, that's way more important than flying the W, way more important than, I dare I even say it, than Andy's. Um, Frank, that's what this channel's all about. Keep turning that doorknob, keep working hard, keep dreaming, getting through the hard, parts of life, you know what I mean, which we all have. So Frank, thanks for being a little vulnerable with everybody down in the comments. What is question of the day? What is a specific lesson that you have learned from your last race? Okay. I hope I was specific enough in that a little analysis. I mean, 2020, the goal was to win the race. 2021, set a solid ascent PR. 
2022, uh-huh, maybe I finally work on those downhill skills and try and run faster downhill. So, all right, onward and upward, we will toss it, of course, to the race blog right there, right there, right there. Okay, oh, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.